We are dying. I bet you've heard about the floods in Valencia, but let me tell you, everything you've seen in the news, that's bullshit. What is happening here is way beyond anything the news is showing. My name is Josep Martí, and for the past five days, I have been day and night coordinating a relief distribution center here in Al Fafar, one of the hardest hit towns. And I'm here to tell you the real story, not the sanitized version that the media is feeding you with. Valencia isn't just a city. It's surrounded by towns that are so close to each other you don't even realize when you're leaving one and entering the next. There's Alfafar, Sedaví, Masanasa, Benetuser, Catarrocha, Paiporta, Picaña, Torrent y Aldaya. Now, there's something here called La Rambla del Pollo, which is basically a riverbed that usually is dry, is meant to, is meant to channel rainwater to the sea and it works fine until it doesn't. Last Tuesday, October 29th, towns like Chiba and Buñol were hit with insane amount of rains, nearly 500 liters per square meter. That water filled up the Rambla del Pollo, turning into a raging, unstoppable force. By the time it reached the lower towns, it was already out of control, tearing through neighborhoods, dragging everything with it. People had no idea this was coming. They were just out there shopping, driving, living their lives. And just then, the flood was right in their streets. You may be wondering what's the difference between a regular flooding and this one. Usually floodings happen when it rains a lot and the city can hold all that water. That means that the water raises a lot, but very, very slowly. Here the problem is that the water came all at once like a tsunami. It wasn't even raining in those towns when the floating got there. You can't imagine the chaos this caused. People trapped in their cars, in parking garage, in malls, people with their babies. These are the consequences. By Wednesday morning, the news was already softening the story. Floating in Valencia, they said, like it was just some river that, that overflowed a bit. But I know this area. I grew up in Alfafar, one of the affected towns, and I knew that it was not okay. I tried to contact my family and friends, but it was impossible. They were unconnected. So I grabbed a backpack loaded with food and water and walked for four hours until I reached the disaster zone. What I saw, what I saw, th there's no words that can describe that. This is the limit between Valencia and the south. I was crossing this bridge over here. Valencia city on my back was untouched. People were going about their day like nothing was wrong. But in front of me, there was pure devastation. Mud and water waist deep, piles of debris, cars stocked on top of each other, three high. People were wandering over the streets, crying, searching for loved ones. Every step was like running a marathon because of the water and the mud. And then 
And then I saw bodies, like bodies floating next to me, completely dead. Bodies trapped in the cars. And here's the thing, none of this made it into the news. There aren't any pictures or any videos because no one from the media was there yet. There was no volunteers, there was no police, it was me, the neighbors affected and pure devastation. After four hours of just jumping over a pile of cars, I got to Alpha Far. I checked on my family and friends and they were all fine. Most of them lost everything they had. Their houses, their cars, their lives. There was no electrical power, there was no water, there was no phone line, there was no internet. They were sucked from top to bottom. I'm a tall guy, okay, I'm like one meter, it's 89 centimeters, that's like 6.2 feet tall, okay? The mark of the water on the walls inside the house was here. Here. And of course, I spent the whole night helping friends and family to just try to not die there. If I thought that Wednesday was bad, Thursday was hell. The first volunteers were starting to show up, walking from Valencia like I did, because there was no other way to get there. A couple of thousand people was coming, but the affected area was too big, and that was, of course, that was not enough at all. The Spanish military should have, should have been there by now, the day after the tragedy. The first 24 hours are critical in any disaster like this because there were people trapped in their cars, in their houses, in the parking lots, people who could have been saved. But where was the military? Nowhere. I kept helping the neighbors, all the furniture, all the electronics, the fridge, the oven, the bed, everything was destroyed. They had no house whatsoever, all the clothes, all the memories, but those who lost everything were just repeating Tenim sort, estem vius. Many people was still dead on the streets. Many people didn't have any news about their friends, about their family, even their kids. I talked to a mother who left their kids with friends, uh, with, in, on a friend's house, and she was unable to know if her kids even were alive, if, they're sur if they survived. But even worse, the streets turned lawless. People started looting, not just for food or water, which I get, but electronics, jewelry, anything they could get. When night fell, things got worse. Of course, the power was out, and in the dark, people were fighting, knife in hand for whatever they could get. It was like the freaking jungle. It was like living in a city abandoned by everyone who was supposed to protect it. That night I managed to sleep two hours and have a shower. Shower. Basically a shower was a bouquet of water and a kitchen pot doing like this. That was my shower. Of course, remember there was no light, there was no water, there was no food, there was nothing there. By morning, I headed to Alpha Far's relief distribution point at the school called La Fila, La Escuela La Fila. And what did I find? An absolute and total chaos. Volunteers shouting, people running around, donations piling up, but zero organization. This, of course, is the part where the Spanish military should have been coordinating supplies, managing food, water, hygiene materials, but they still hadn't arrived. I stepped up to organize that mess, separating, separating supplies for distribution, trying to get 
a flow of going. Trucks loaded with donations from civilians, not from the government. This is important. The, those trucks kept coming. I had locals coming in with tractors to clean the streets. Then, while cleaning out, we, we found even more bodies there. Buried on the, on the mat. On the Relief Distribution Center, we, we got to create a safe space, kind of, where we could receive donations, organize them, pack them, and load them into trucks so they could deliver to all parts of the town. Well, the parts that could be accessed. Please keep in mind that this is the third day, okay? This is day number three, and all that work, all that organization, all that deliveries, all that food, all that, all that was made by volunteers. You know what's funny? Well, funny, that's not the word, but the, the word, it, it's a word I cannot say here. The fact is that right here in Valencia, we've got a NATO headquarters with 2,500 freaking troops. And they never got the order to come help. Why? Why they were just sitting there while people were dying? Check this video. A French rescue team arrived here in Alpha Far before our own freaking police force did. On est les premiers secours ici arrivés. Ouais. Vous n'avez pas vu de secours du tout. Arrivé encore la police d'Espagne. Personne. On sait de rue, non. Il n'a pas arrivé. On est les premiers arrivés. Ouais. D'accord. Bah non. Isn't isn't that isn't that absurd? And you know what else? Cops, firefighters, and even soldiers were coming from different cities in civilian clothes because they didn't have the authoris authorization to come as professionals. Can you believe that? By the fourth day, the relief center was somehow under control, but Outside, the streets were like a war zone. Entire neighborhoods still cut off. Elderly people trapped in their homes without food or water for days. Thousands of volunteers swarmed the area, helping however they could, but certainly tasks needed heavy machinery. The army is trained for those circumstances. They know what to do. They know how to proceed. They, they, they have the tools and the machinery to fix that mess. And everyone was asking, where the fuck is the army? Now, the truth is that by Saturday, you could see a lot of police and firefighters. But after four days, that was not enough at all. People spread the word and now there was Thousands, like thousands of volunteers everywhere. Every street was filled with random people helping others, people cleaning, people moving stuff. All that work that the government was not doing, it was done by the population, by the neighbors, by the volunteers. Quiero que se sepa que si no es por la gente que estáis viviendo de fuera, Nos morimos de hambre porque ni comida, ni agua, nada. Gracias a todos los voluntarios que venís de todas las partes, están, tenemos la gente de aquí de Catarroja para comer. Que lo sepa todo España y todo el mundo, que gracias a todos vosotros. No nos morimos de hambre gracias a los voluntarios. Que lo sepa la gente. Keep, keep in mind that we were isolated at that time. We still don't have power, we have no water, no connection, no phones. We didn't know what was happening outside that town or we don't know what we didn't know what politicians were doing to help us but the sensation the feeling was like total abandonment we were abandoned by the people who was supposed to take care of us and this is something that you might have heard as well on the news the king visited valencia and valencians threw mud and shouted insults at him And that is not true. Those official media, they are telling lies. Mud and the shouts were aimed at two politicians that were there. Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez and the head of the Valencian government, Carlos Mazón. 
they were the ones the people was furious with for failing us, for letting people die. They are the assassins. Let me clarify this because this, it's very important that we understand the priorities in, in that kind of situations, okay? People there were dying. Everyone knew someone who died. Streets were filled with dead people. Streets were filled with shit and mud and water. Many people lost everything, their lives and everything. They were destroyed. So this is the truth. For most of us, we didn't care at all about the king. The king in Spain is a symbolic figure with no real powers. He is just the representation of the Spanish population, but he cannot do anything. He's not responsible for anything. He's there. Let him stay there. I don't give a shit about him. But Sanchez? But Mazón? the Prime Minister and the government of Valencia? No, they are the ones responsible. So we were not shouting at the king, we were shouting at the mother politicians who killed because they killed by not taking action, they killed people. And don't get me started about the amount of dead people because I'm gonna talk about that later because they are hiding numbers from us. Everything in the media is a lie. There's way more dead people than they are telling us, and there's way more mess than they are letting the world know. Anyway, coming back to the topic, as soon as things got heated, Sanchez ran for his car, while people pounded on it, on it, desperate to make him understand the situation that we were living. Meanwhile, the king and the queen actually stayed there. They have, again, no responsibilities, they, they have nothing to do there, and they stayed there to listen and talk to us. Again, I don't give a shit about them, okay? But at least that's a little, it's the first tiny proof of humanity that we have seen in five freaking days. And it's not even a tiny bit of humanity coming from the responsibles. It's just a guy who has nothing to do here. But by then, it didn't matter if you were left or right, whatever. We were all just Valencians and we were fed up with being lied to. They told us that the military had arrived, that help was there. Total bullshit. If not for the volunteers, many more would have died. That's thousands and thousands of anonymous people from Valencia and the rest of Spain doing the work that the freaking government didn't do. By Monday, I had to come back to work. I walked home to shower, my first real shower in five days, and maybe just to try to empty my mind of what I have lived. But as soon as I sat down and I turned at the TV, and I, I couldn't believe what I saw. The news was saying that things were under control. 
only 200 dead people. Hell was everywhere. We attacking the king. All those things are lies. The whole world was watching whitewashed version of what was happening there. They didn't know what we knew because in the disaster zone, we didn't even have power to watch the news ourselves. And online, online it was even worse. People were using the tragedy for plot, posting pictures covered with mud just for likes. Political bickering flooded my feet, like people blaming the left, people blaming the right, but nobody cared about the people suffering. And that's when I decided if the media wouldn't tell the truth, I would. I would contact every outlet I could think of, show the world what is really happening here. And I have been on the phone the whole afternoon trying to get in contact with the internal international media corporations. I have been in contact with the CBC from Canada, the CNN from United States and the BBC from UK so far. And if you know someone who can help me with this, please leave a comment. I am not going to stop because this, this is the beginning of the Valencian riot. Now it's 3 a.m. on Tuesday. So today marks a week since this nightmare began. A week of hell, a week of lies, and a week of our, our own government abandoning us. I'm heading up to Al Fafar in two hours at 5 a.m. to keep working and helping my neighbors and my friends. I won't stop until every news outlet, every radio station, every paper knows the truth. At this very moment, Tuesday 5th of November, there are still bodies in the streets. People still don't have power or clean water. Elderly folks are freezing in their homes because there's no heat. The streets are cows, there's robberies, but this stops now. We Valencians are done with this broken system, with these politicians who only care about their image. And this affects you too. United States, Germany, UK, Italy, France, Turkey, Egypt, Israel, wherever you live, think about all the times the politicians have abandoned you. Doesn't matter if they are right or left, it all, it's all the same shit. We think we choose people who's prepared to govern us. Nope, we choose people who knows how to create political campaigns. That's it. The modern political system is proven to be a failure. It is a failure system when it is unable to protect and offer the bare minimum to the population in crisis. We Valencians are people of fire. Las Fallas is our symbol. And we are starting a riot that will be studied by the future generations. If you're watching this, share it. Tell everyone you know, this is not a story about Valencia. It's a story about what happens when those in power fail the people they are supposed to serve. We are neither from the left or from the right. We are the ones from below and we are coming for those above.